Let's talk about the fun game then. I'm, let's, I mean it. <laughs> let's, let's, see. let's talk about Hawaii 45, Arizona 38. Hawaii mm-hmm. plus 11 covers. Hawaii money line covers. The over 74 covers. This was a fun ball game. Um, over 1,100 yards, 58 first downs, 83 points, 8 turnovers. Uh, Cole McDonald, 29 out of 41, 378 yards, 4 touchdowns, 4 picks. He all got All in three quarters and was benched. <laughs> like, oh that God. is... Now, the guy that he was uh, benched for, <laughs> Shevin uh, Cordero? I yeah, believe that's how you say it. Yep, that's uh, how I would say it. He was five out of seven, fifty-eight yards, one touchdown, and that was when the game was thirty-five to thirty-five. They brought in, they they young... brought in this kid when it was down to the dick cutting. This is not we've got a three touchdown lead and you're blowing it and you're giving it away kind of thing. No, this was this game is on the line, yeah. and I don't trust my senior quarterback who's all world everything. Well, he's a he's a junior, isn't he? Four. I think McDonald's a junior. Okay, maybe he is. But either way, but, he's but either been way, there. like super experienced, and he's got almost four hundred yards of offense, and I can't, and he's four touchdowns, and I can't trust you. Yeah. I can't trust you. So I'm gonna put the kid in, and he's gonna close this thing out for me. All right. He went to he went to St. Louis High School. All right, yeah, you ready for place, the same place Tua went to? Uh, same what, place. Hold on, it's not just Tua. I'm about to. Okay, I was, you're gonna run through them. I'm gonna run through them. Timmy Chang, Jeremiah Masoli, Marcus Mariota, Tua Tagovailoa. Mm-hmm. And then this kid. No, the Hawaiians used Ooh. to put in the, the, the Polynesian kids that came out were always defensive linemen, defensive tackles, uh, edge rushers, linebackers, safeties, hard-hitting kamikaze. We're going to come at you with the Thunder dudes on defense. Yes. Or big hog mollies on offense. That's who they used to be. Man, they are QBU right now. I believe that. Believe that. I mean, it's it's crazy this to look kid, at. This kid looked good. We didn't get a lot to see, and there was no defense. I know, I, I know. Arizona <laughs> no, got right. all those turnovers. Listen, that the, those turnovers are real. It's not, it's not happening. Yeah. Uh, wide receiver Cedric Bird, the second, fourteen oh. receptions, two hundred twenty-four <laughs> yards, four touchdowns. Uh, it's the first time that a, uh, a wide receiver has had four touchdowns in a game and over two hundred receiving yards since nineteen ninety-six. Uh, so it, I saw that number. Do, who was that team and who was that that player? Because I I've never Googled it. it. I've looked it up. How dare how CBS Sports gave us that stat last night and, and they never they told us, who, it was. us who that guy was. I was like, I can't Google. Like Google is not finding this for me. No, I, I, I couldn't know. find it. I would I imagine know. that it had to be uh, somebody for Spurrier's bunch, right? Uh, that's well that yeah that's year six of Spurrier in Florida yeah 96 that is when they won the national championship so Werfel was the quarterback it, it could have easily been whoever I, it could have been Jack Green just, it could have been I'm just gonna look I'm just gonna look up yeah 96 season game splits when this is over with I'll come up with it yeah all right so so this like Arizona could not find this bird kid right I mean he was <laughs> it, he was just wide open it felt like all the time Arizona ran a zone defense the entire game. Yeah. And Hawaii had two people with nobody around them every pass play. Kevin I mean, Sumlin looked like a complete buffoon in this ballgame. Yeah. Over and over and over again. You know, like one of, one of my notes was you said this when we previewed this game. Someone last year was insanely predictable. Yeah, they were every first down. Hawaii's Hawaii's run defense ain't that good. Okay, every first down, Hawaii knew they were running the ball and had a rush blitz every first down, and they didn't try to throw it not once, and they didn't get near a yard on those run plays, which was insane. Which sets them up for long second and long third over and over and over again. And now last night, the announcers kept saying. No, I got home finally and could actually listen to this one. <laughs> Old Mazzoni was calling the plays. I do you is Kevin Sumlin calling these plays or is is did he hand it to Mazzoni? It, I think Either he way, handed he's it to Mazzoni. But it, it is still He's still responsible. Yes. He's still he's involved the in the game planning. And well, yeah. it, look, the opening section where, where Hawaii was going down the field and I mean they went up early. What was it, twenty one to seven early? Twenty one seven, um, yes, sir. The the opening plays, which are generally scripted were just passes and didn't yeah. take advantage of Khalil Tate's 
athletic ability. They didn't take advantage of J.J. Taylor. You know, eventually, once well, the game got going, they tried. They tried with Taylor, and I just—I'm telling you—they their their offensive line either tips their hand or something. They knew every time it was going to be a run play in the first half. Every time Taylor got nothing in the first half. No, no, no. I, and I, I noticed that, but it was it was after because he, it was set up in very predictable situations. Yes, like it yes. was just bananas to to look at and see what they were trying to do. J.J. Taylor ended up 14 carries, 67 yards with one touchdown and a long of 24. But all so, of that happened in the second half. Yeah. He had like six carries for nine yards in the first half or something. I mean, it was something insanely bad. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's it, Hawaii is not a running football team, and Hawaii had, what, three more carries than them in the first yeah. half? I mean, it just – Why? It, it so there, no there's sense. so many different ways I want to go with this. Khalil Tate finally in the in the middle third quarter, fourth quarter, they it's like they took the reins off. Now remember when Khalil Tate they were looking at um, oh god I'm, I'm so bad with this name the Navy head coach you know you you say his Neil Matalolo Neil Matalolo that's it yeah Navy's head coach and Khalil Tate through fit was like I'm not running I'm not running the option. And what the hell will they start doing? They're running the damn option. Yeah. I want Kevin Sumlin because he's not going to run the option. Oh, wait. Yeah, we are. Well, it's a, when it gets down to the to the guts of this game, and the best play on the field was for Khalil Tate to run the football. But, I mean, that's what he's got to do is run the football. But I don't, know that, I don't know that the option is the best opportunity to do that for Khalil Tate. I actually think a standard spread offense with a mobile quarterback and you yes. just have signed quarterback bootleg runs, that, that's, that's perfectly acceptable. We've watched hundreds of quarterbacks in college football and now going into the pros run that style of offense. We saw and Johnny Manziel better. run it. Yes, it's like, far better than an option. The option, while it gives you so many "quote unquote" options, also all those extra guys that don't get the ball are not blocking to help the runner. Right. So because they don't know if they're getting the ball or not, so they can't take on a blocker. But if you do a design run, you know who's getting the ball, and all ten other players are blocking someone. Yeah. Like that's that's the deal with this is it's the reason the option doesn't work in the NFL. Wait, it's, because I, I think if Khalil got Tate eight guys trying to block. Yeah, you're gonna lose. Khalil Tate, I think, wants to throw the football, and I think that Kevin Sumlin has been it, trying to to make that the biggest option. He was 22 out of 39 last night, which is not eh. bad. Okay, so, hey, whatever. 300, 300, a lot hey, of those are throwaways. Yeah, he did three, throw away the ball a couple 361 times. yards, three touchdowns. Yards, three TDs, man. That's Only not one bad. Pick. Like, it, it wasn't, but it, it, I he would did feel throw like, that soul crushing interception in the fourth quarter on yeah. the red zone, right at the goal line. That, that I thought, this game's over now. This yeah. game is over. He just took their soul. Yeah. And, and instead, uh, he had a chance. Now, I mean, the ending of this game was. Absolutely incredible. Absolutely everything incredible. Everything I expect from Pac 12 after dark. Yeah. Just, just everything I expect. Well, I mean, it's it's getting down to 1 a.m. Central Time, and I'm exhausted. And all of us, and I'm, of course, I'm like, all right, for those of us that had like Hawaii money line bets and everything else, like, please, Lord, don't let him get in this. And, so, and then he breaks open, and you hear the, the guys like, he's going to, he can do this. He can do this. And then 40 something yard rush, man, <laughs> wide open, making people miss. He needed 31 yards. He got 30. <laughs> he, he, he is a freak. I, I, the, whatever play calls they started in the second half of the third quarter, I guess, on the rest of the game, that's the offense they need to run. Yeah. Guess what? That's probably the worst defense you're going to play all year. Oh, so, yeah. And it, it ain't getting better from that. No, no, you're right. Uh, it it is definitely funny to look back six or seven years ago when Sumlin was the hottest thing in coaching, and should have taken that Cowboys job. Yeah, and and now just it look his kicker, a hundred percent bailed him out. Hey, after the know, three, so there's, a, there's a new fad in the NFL where they're actually drafting kickers. That guy's got stones like oh, nobody's yeah. business. When your offensive line 
gets three like, straight puts, penalties to puts turn a, you in the position yeah. that they put him in, and he goes out there and he just drills it. Boy, that young man's got nuts. I uh, believe that it, it was a thirty-eight yarder to begin with. Three straight penalties, whether it's false start or illegal procedure or yeah. whatever it is. Uh, three straight penalties, and then your coach has to call a timeout, which they could have used at the end of this game. I was about to say, because because delay a game. Because they were about to get another penalty. (laughs) And then goes up and drills a 53-yarder like it's nothing. I mean, that was just – Yeah, that was absolutely insane. Um, And so how much – to close out this, how much trouble is Sumlin in, and do you think there's any hope for Arizona in the Pac-12 South? No, I don't. I don't. I I, I, think, I, I think I think a lot, and and well, okay. I don't know a lot because I don't really know Arizona's. Not not to besmirch the fans of Arizona, they want to win, they want to do better, but they're not one of these. I mean, they're not Auburn, where every three years, if you lose eight games, we're going to fire you, kind of thing. Like I do think, like Hawaii is pretty good. You know, I, yeah, I you, that was you, one of my. And you went to the island. That's a long way to go. Yeah. It's a long way to travel. A lot of distract for guys that have never been to the island before. Um, so I, I think it's going to get hot, and I don't think it's going to get easier, not that the Pac-12 are, are gangbusters, but when you play teams like Utah and Cal that have really good defenses, that's going to be tough. Yeah, You know, that's going to be real tough because you just played maybe the worst defense you're going to play all year. Let's see. Hawaii, I mean, uh, Hawaii, Arizona's got Northern Arizona, Texas Tech, UCLA at Colorado, Washington at USC, at Stanford, Oregon State at Oregon, Utah, and at Arizona State. Pac-12 Pac play is going to be rough. Yeah. Pac-12 play is going to be rough. Now, you, you've you 100% got that right. They, they, they need to try to win two Pac-12 games and just try to win the, 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 the rivalry game at the end of the year, win the rest of your non-conference games, and 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 try to salvage a season of five wins. No, you you're right. I mean, well, you're hoping to get to a bowl game this year, right? But yeah, I don't, man. That, I don't know that, that means they get they gotta, there. in order to get to a bowl game, they got to win both their other non-conference games and three Pac-12 games. Nope, four, four Pac. That would put them at four Pac-12 games. Yeah, I mean, and and one of the non-conference games is Texas Tech, and I just. Oh man, that's they're not, that's they're rough. Not, I don't think they're, I don't think they're winning that game. I don't I don't think so either. <laughs> I haven't seen Texas Tech play yet, and we just watched them play. But so let me tell you this: so you know how I am with coaches in college football. Yeah. Uh, when I get in the tank with a guy, I'm in the tank for it takes a lot to get me out. Uh, Nick Rolovich. Oh, you in the tank? That's that's my guy. That's my oh, guy, Billy. Hey, you need to. You and everybody else need to go and listen to uh, the podcast. Ain't played nobody from. Earlier, like last week, uh, Stephen Godfrey does a uh, an interview with him at Mountain West Media Days. He is fascinating to listen to. He is so awesome, man. So it's that that's a really good one. You need to go check that out. I love that. Like uh, just googling stuff about him and looking up different like his history and whatever. All of his pictures, all of his like like you know media portraits or whatever. He's all clean shaven, nice. Last night he was scruff, rough oh, yeah. looking. I was like, that's. That's that's my guy. Going with Ford on Ford. Me and you were texting in this game. You're like, absolutely the right play is to kick the field goal. Screw that field goal. <laughs> you go for it. This is my guy. He's a fourth down. I'm not afraid of anything. If I get this t- first down, it's over. Like, I love And then, of course, guy. he takes the field goal. <laughs> he takes the field goal. I know. I was, dis- I was so disappointed. I was like, I'm so disappointed right now. I just can't. I can't even look at hey, him. The, it was the right spot. Take the points. Get your, get your new quarterback some, you know, some, Points? Uh, no. Let your you new quarterback zip one in the end zone. Let him fling it. That's, That's man. Right. No, get that lead. That's what they needed last night. They needed that lead. Did McDonald lose this job? You know, I, that was one of my notes that I put down. I was like, does uh, does the new guy take over the job? Um, I will I, say I, this. Regardless of who it is, I feel like the over five and a half wins for the season is in the good. bag now. So I feel like that win's, you know, there. Yeah. Um, well, I, I think so, too. I think you did good there. I think. I think they go back to McDonald for this next too. week. If this was my team, I would too. And here's the thing: they had six turnovers. I swear to God, I thought I saw nine. That, that, well, a lot of those awful. McDonald interceptions were were deflections, or not a lot, that's but right. like two that's of them right. at least. But but the here's the thing: it was the straw that broke the back, and the announcers did an excellent job. Rick Neuheisel in the in the booth talked about this. 
This is a situation where he, the quarterback, has to get in everyone's face that's going to touch the ball and say, you have to protect this football like it is your life. Yeah. This is your job and your responsibility. And the last interception was not a deflection, was not one of these. It was he underthrew the ball, threw a lay, the guy picked it, and the guy took it back for a while. And that's when you got, you know what, I can't lean on you to ask everybody else to protect the ball. If you're not going to, no, you're. And you're I think it's. Right. I think it's okay to pull him. I think it's a crazy big moment for the kid to 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 throw him in there, Chavis. And and I'm. If it was my team and I was the head coach, we're going into practice Monday, and McDonald's my guy again, and yeah. we get the team around and we let him know we believe we're gonna we're gonna protect the ball. Everybody's gonna clean up their turnovers, not just you, but you more importantly. So yeah, all right. That was so, my thought. I was curious if you thought he added to. Yeah, no, I, I think I think I'm going to roll with the upperclassman for now because McDonald. I mean, he was the number eight total uh, passing quarterback in the yeah, country. Four hundred yards in three quarters. Yeah, like it's it, obviously he can fling it, but man, there was something going on last night. It was just weird Pac-12 after dark kind of stuff, you know. So Pac-12 sometimes after dark, if you don't believe in voodoo i can't explain things to you yeah like we i know that i'm on the one that sounds like a fool saying that but but we can't have a rational conversation about how the world really works if you don't believe in voodoo because <laughs> i've watched too much pac 12 after dark <laughs> and nobody's going to convince me that there's not some weird juju stuff that's just happening oh yeah no you you 100 percent right all I right just, i can't i can't believe it that uh that is going to wrap up our recap which went 36 minutes it looks like today <laughs> So I would imagine Football this will be is back, Gary. Yeah, it is back. Sorry, it is I'm, back. I'm sorry, I'm excited. No, no, no. Well, imagine, imagine what next week's gonna be like. So I'm, I'm pumped about it. All right. So <laughs> this was the Monday podcast. On Tuesday, we're gonna talk about the breaking news uh, about Andrew Luck retiring and what Any that other means. Breaking what news. It. And there's some other stuff that happened throughout the week that we needed to us. Yeah, yeah. There's other stuff as well. So we'll, we'll talk about uh, that. That, that was the big news, of course. Yeah. Oh, and then no, on Wednesday, uh, we're coming back. Wednesday through Friday, we will have our picks, our previews, etc. Leading up to week one in college football, we'll talk about the biggest games, uh, our picks and our picks against the spread, our gambling picks, everything else. We cannot wait for that. Chris, let's get on out of here. Everybody go to tunicatravel.com. Go to winningcureseverything.com. Hit subscribe. Leave a review on Apple Podcast. Leave some comments on YouTube. We'll see you guys again tomorrow. Football's back. Believe that. Thanks for checking out Winning Cures Everything. If you want to keep up with us, hit subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app. Visit the website at winningcureseverything.com or you can like us on Facebook or follow us at Winning Cures, at Gary WCE, or at Chris B. Giannini on Twitter. Share out the show, leave a nice review, and make sure to comment and tweet at us.